Hey guys, okay, so today I am at the Belmont Estate, as you can see by the sign right there. Um, it is a chocolate factory located on the north side of the island in Grenada, up a little bit past Grenville, which is one of like um, the major cities here. Um, like I said, it's a chocolate factory. They also have a restaurant here and everything. I've come up here several times with my girlfriend. I've come up here with my family. I highly recommend it to anyone, like if you're a student, if you're a traveler, even if you're Grenadian and you're looking for like a nice date, it's really cool. I always enjoy the tours here. I always have like a great time. The food is great um, and it's spectacular. And like, I think all of the Grenadian chocolate factories are great because I've been to, I think three of the four of them on the island. Um, but I just really like Belmont just because it has like a lot of things here to do. Um, the scenery, it sits on like 400 acres, but I'm not gonna get into too much of the details because I know I'm supposed to be going on like an in-depth tour. So stick around and we're going to see how Belmont makes their chocolate. Okay, so I'm just waiting here. Um, I'm supposed to be meeting a few people. I have to get my temperature checked and everything. Um, but this is like one of like the warehouses. And again, like that's the restaurant up there. You keep on walking, but like I said, I'm gonna wait and get like an official tour. So as soon as I get all checked in and it starts, I'll come back to y'all. Okay guys, so I'm with my tour guide here, Kelly. He's gonna show me the whole process of like how the chocolate starts from start to finish. So we're going out to the trees now and we're gonna work our way back through the whole process so i'm following you <laughs> Taking a lead, right? yep so here um the belmont estate originally this used to be a sugar plantation it started off back in the 1700s mm -hmm. where it was first operated by the french hmm. belmont yeah Beautiful oh, mountain. No. oh okay all right so we inherited the name from there yeah after the french we also had well the british were here as well mm -hmm. um the cultivation of sugar cane cotton and coffee Mm. on this estate back then okay after the french and british we also had scottish family oh yes. i never knew that so quite the mix right yeah but um all throughout these times the worst slaves on the estate slavery abolished mm -hmm. indentured servants were then brought in from calcutta india wow to grenada right yeah <laughs> now descendants from these indentured servants in 1944 norbert nyack and his wife Luris Nyack, mm -hmm. they bought the Belmont Estate. Wow. Which was like 35,000 pounds back then. Yeah. 400 acres of land. That's a lot for what they bought, so. Trust me, right? Yeah. And today it is still in the family's possession. Mm -hmm. 400 acres. We are, I would say, the number one suppliers of organic cocoa bean on the island of Grenada. Yeah. Technically, we don't really export or supply too much people because we're making our own chocolates. Yeah. But it's all good, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to go across the street. Just come across the street a little bit. And then we're jumping in. Because is this all still their land down to the river back here? Because it's both sides of the road. Wow. All right. And right here, as you can see. The cocoa plant. All right. And there are different types of cocoa. Okay. This here is called Trinitario cocoa, mm -hmm. which is a hybrid from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. Um, year round production. But the best time is from October to April. Oh, so I'm in that time. <laughs> Correct, right? Okay. And to begin, you have some parts, but to actually begin with these That's tiny how they flowers. Start. That's how it starts off. Wow. Pollination basically occurs with the sand flies and those seams and stuff. Oh, yes. First I don't parts, like this. I get bit up by those all the time. Well, you don't so. like them, but it do have some use. Yeah. So, right? First, um, parts are green, second, red, and third and final, orange or yellow. Okay. So, like, that's red. That's red. Okay. All right. Orange and yellow. All right. Oh, wow. I didn't even see this tree right. right here. So, yeah. And uh, pretty much the harvesting, it is done manually. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to climb the trees because you notice the fruits come off the backs and stems. Yeah. So, bamboo is about 15 feet long with a sharp knife at the edge of the bamboo. You go around and you cut all the yellow pods down. Okay. But I haven't got a tool, so yeah. I'll be climbing. Twisting them off. Not pulling or damaging the back. Okay. So that's you right here. So this is a red one or is this one considered ripe? Right. Orange this, or yellow? Orange or yellow. Once so this is not red. Not red. That one up there was red. Thank you. Okay. Alright, so once you see signs of orange or yellow that is maturity yeah okay machete to cut it open no machete let's just find a rock let's hit him on the right spot mm -hmm. right around he's opened already oh wow and then this voila. is the best part for me <laughs> as a kid growing up these used to be our local candies yeah these right. are so nice can i take one of course 
So what sort of flavors do you get when you taste that? Mm. It's like sweet. It's like sweet. But you taste a lot of different things at once. So I can't explain it. So why do you think there's so many different fruity flavors and fruity notes in there? Right, so basically the Trinitario Coco mm -hmm. in a shade grown as well, mm -hmm. but also when you grow the cocoa with plants like bananas and oranges and mangoes, through the roots, the xylem mm -hmm. and the fruit and vessels, the beans normally obtain the flavors of these fruits growing around mm. it. Right, so when you I look at I can taste the citrus now that you say that, yeah. And that's an orange shoe right here. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. So. Right? So basically when you look at the fields, it just looks like jungle. Yeah. But it's organized chaos. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're back from harvesting. The cocoa beans, all of the freshly harvested cocoa beans will then be transported to this building, which is called a bucan, right? Bucan? A bucan. Okay. It's French for a drying house. Oh, okay. Right? That makes sense. So, the beans brought in, bags and buckets. This is our sifter. You insert all of the freshly harvested beans in there, sort through them manually, stick stones, leaves, insects, gone. The weight of the bean is then recorded. The bean, Normally, right, you suck up the pulp and you enjoy that. Yeah. But if the beans arrive here and there is no pulp, they will not be processed. Because that's, they're like, not, not right. good. Okay. The pulp is what triggers the fermentation. Okay. Right, so those beans with the pulp will be inserted into the fermentation or sweat boxes. Mm -hmm. On average, per box, up to 6,000 pounds of cocoa beans. Wow. In weight, right? If they were up to the top or? Stack them up. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Wow. Fermentation, six days total. Mm -hmm. But while fermenting for six days, as you notice, the beans must be covered with burlaps mm -hmm. and also green banana leaves. Covering them will trap the heat that is produced during the fermentation process itself. Yeah, I can feel heat coming. Right? And what happens? These white fleshy beans that you sucked on, mm -hmm. natural yeast found in the pulp converts the sugar into alcohol, carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. The pulp liquidifies during the fermentation, the beans bitterness subsidize. And the chocolatey brown color together with the chocolate flavor comes while it's fermenting. Cool. Right? And it's it's like starting to smell like that dark chocolate. Thank you very much. Smell, You're getting like, it, flavor, right? Yeah. <laughs> and in peak peak season, when we have much more processing, the smell, you get more like a hops, vinegar, all these things yeah. coming in there. If you collect the juice, you make wine as well. It is not done here. Yeah, so but you could. Wine. Six days total. Every two days you manually transfer from one bin to the other. And it keeps going down. Right, and that's just to oxygenate, aerate, mix it up, ensuring even and proper fermentation. Hmm, okay. Right? Yep. Good to go? Yeah. After we ferment, we need to dry. Oh, this is the part I like. <laughs> because what we're looking at, this drying facility uh -huh. was actually installed for drying coffee beans back in the days. But if it's not broken, don't fix it. It still works. Yep. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> so the drying normally takes eight days of sunshine. Mm -hmm. Eight days of drying to preserve so they last longer. Yeah. While drying for eight days outside in these wooden trees, ladies, barefooted, every half an hour, walk the bee. Okay. Walking turns them over, exposes them to more air and sunshine, speeding up the drying process. Instead of drying beans for eight days outside, in here, it's six days. Okay, so, so cut down some time, yeah. All right, and also instead of walking, every half an hour, wait. Yeah. All right, but it's the same thing, just to turn them over, speed up the drying process. Okay. Right, this way. Yes, so we have the sorting of the beans, which is done manually, right? And the sorting, you have large, medium, and small. The large and the medium beans, these are collected for chocolate production. The smaller beans, we use that to make the cocoa tea. Mm, okay. Nothing to do with quality. It is just that when you're conducting the roasting, the smaller beans get roasted faster. They will burn. That affects your end product flavor. Yeah. Right? So by hand, also creates employment as well. Also <laughs> adds more love into your product as well. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, the polishing, however, 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. you would polish beans if you export them. Yeah. Now, the polish can also polish in there. The polishing does not remove the outer shell. It just makes it smooth shiny. and shiny. That's okay. It, right? Yeah. So to polish traditionally, yeah. trampoline or dancing. <laughs> like yeah. a trampoline. Right. Because you're just jumping on it. You have the big bowls, coppers, which were for boiling sugar cane for the rum. Put your dry beans in there. Two persons, barefeeted, inside, drums, liquor, and dance. <laughs> One and a half to two hours. That's that's a good way to go. Right? So, yeah. But again, that is just to make it pretty. So today we cut that out. Yeah. So. Okay. So now, um, I think we're gonna try some cocoa tea made right here, and he's gonna show um, everything that is grown here on Belmont Estate. Um, so I'm just waiting for him to come out of his office. Yeah. This is like one of my favorite places on the island. Um, it's just really nice. The food's really good. Like, I love coming up here. I think this is like my fourth or fifth time here. So definitely recommend, like, if you're traveling here, if you're a student here, even if you're a Canadian looking for, like, a nice date. Like, a lot of times on the weekend, they have live music at the restaurant. Like, this is just a nice place to come if you have the opportunity. So here is my cocoa tea. Here is your cocoa tea. So the cocoa tea will be the cocoa beans boiled in water with bay leaf and cinnamon as the spices. And then we add some condensed milk to that. Mm, it's good. And it's just hot. I'm just trying not to burn my mouth. It is hot, yeah. I normally cook with tea. Sorry, but. Oh, yeah, it's fine. So it's a drink that is consumed by the locals, and it's said to be a drink that makes you smile a lot <laughs> after consuming it. Happy drink, we call it's it. Yeah. But it, it's so good. Like, I, I like it. And it's, I've had cocoa tea ice cream from somewhere and I really like it like too. It. Yeah. I, I like the taste. As well. I like the taste a lot. And you can see it is different to that of hot chocolate, right? It is, yeah. Right. It doesn't have the same taste at all. <laughs> so now we're heading up to where the actual chocolate chocolate bar that you think of is made at the chocolate factory. Get down to chocolate business. Yep. <laughs> Right, so you just need to get the right tire okay. on. Right, so beans brought in and you begin with the roasting, yeah? Okay. So we have a bit of craziness going on this morning. <laughs> Some cocoa powder and stuff. Yeah, so we get at the back of the roasting area. So this is roasting cocoa butter press and cocoa powder making area. Okay. So we try to keep all the mashing as cranky at the back. Got it, yeah, because it's warmer in here for sure. So So we get the cocoa from where we just came from the bouquin. Mm -hmm. After drying, um, you know, here in like 100 pound bags, weight on the scale. Then they hand sauteed on the table. Okay. So what we tend to do is look for like broken beans, uh, pieces of stick, stone, twin beans, twin beans kind of like those that stick together like that. Yeah. Try to remove them because they don't roast pretty well. Okay. Pretty well. Yeah. So we just go to the tray. Yeah. Make sure we take out all the different pieces. So I'm not sure if you're really interested, but I think I want to have you. Okay. So depend on the Moisture mm -hmm. and stuff. We give like long roll shots of rolls. Yeah. So this is for about 12 minutes. Oh, so that's not long at all. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll wrap it all the time up. Probably we can inside to the dining room. Okay. Mm -hmm. White lemongrass for us today. Oh, white lemongrass? I really like that one. When I tried it in town, I tried a sample. That one was really good. So what we got in, we got in the cocoa butter. Oh, so this is the cocoa butter. Interesting. Second grind, we got a dark. This is a dark sample. We have to just make 100% of the press cocoa butter. So you just Yeah, 
And what is this, sugar? Yeah, this is always interesting to me, so. So over here, we got our milk chocolate. It's a temporary machine, so what it does, uh, it controls the temperature of the chocolate, so the chocolate can survive a little bit in the regular temperature. Chocolate gets shine, and you get a snap and break in the chocolate. So this is really a critical part in chocolate making. Mm -hmm. So you can do this by hand, like really good chocolate makers. They could just temper this on the counter on the counter by hand and they get the same results that the machine can do. So this is a foot paddle, but the foot paddle do control the dosage. So each time you have to drop some stuff, it's an actual dose for the cap. So, so you can either move to the left or the right. Maybe okay. Yeah, we vibrate so we get all air bubbles. Yeah. Because the bubbles tend to shock your lights off the top of the bar. So what you, you could leave your foot on the panel. So now? No, no. Or when I was taking it yeah, off? Yeah, so okay. you're going to have to release the foot. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it, it does it itself. Oh. So you can leave that on the Yeah, OK. <laughs> oh. So is this after it's roasted that it smells like this? Yeah. Because it smells like you're <laughs> really good in here now. <laughs> so what we do uh, after we roast it out? Oh, so they're already out. Oh, this is hot. Yeah. You can eat this? So it's like 100% chocolate. <laughs> yeah. That tastes much better than like when you eat it out there and <laughs> when it's dry. <laughs> Maybe try one on the, on the, on the tray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that actually tastes like chocolate, like you said. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So this just have to put it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go into the cracker. Okay. Aging room. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how long does it age before it's ever sold? The aging itself is three months. Okay. And that is before it is retempered. 
Okay. So after it's been grounded and stuff and processed and they let it solidify, then it comes in here for three months. Okay. And then we're gonna take it out and then we're gonna do the tempering later after three months. Okay. okay. So you have the see the bloom on most of them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice pretty bloom. Yeah. Alright. Alright, you have the big chunks of White. pure cocoa butter. Wow, cocoa butter, yeah. Pure cocoa butter there. Because the white is once the cocoa butter has the milk and the sugar added to it. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap some chocolate. I'm just waiting for my instructor to come because. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna do some chocolate tasting of the different kinds. So we have some different ones here. Is this white chocolate? Or am I just guessing with the taste one? Sorry, right, so we go on the food. Okay, so I just took this one. This looks like ginger. I think that one is white, just white. Mm -hmm. That's the oil with the fried coconut and ginger. Okay. Yeah, you can taste it all. <laughs> That's the dark salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the salt is like, like just enough. It's yeah, about balance of the paper with the apple. Mm -hmm. This is just. Yeah. 
they're all good, um, which is saying a lot for me because I really don't like chocolate. <laughs> I normally only really like white chocolate, so and I like even the other ones, so really, really nice. So remember, we started the white chocolate in the beginning and we had to come back because it had to spin down and we were going to add the lemongrass seasoning. So you can kind of see it's starting to really look like white chocolate going. And like they said, this runs for like four days. <laughs> the other one that they just started over there runs for just like an hour or so before it's like tempered and then it goes to age. I'm learning the process now. And then after aging, it comes out and it does the tempering like we did to make the mold. So we're just going to add the lemongrass to like fire it like at the end of this whole process. Okay, so we're done with the chocolate making. So I just wanted to thank y'all again for showing me. I just wanted to thank y'all for showing me how to make it. So thank y'all. I love it up here. So it's like nice to see what y'all do every day. So okay, so on to the next part. I'm gonna show you the shop and like everything you can buy up here. Like if you're visiting, you could always just come to the shop and get everything. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So this is the shop you can buy everything. Um, they sell the different types of hot chocolates, like the powder, the cocoa powder. There's like unsweetened, like there's different ones. Like this one has bay leaf in it. And so you can get all of those. They actually sell like also the actual like cocoa gifts. Um, and then of course they have all the different bars, um, the different flavors. So you have just your traditional dark chocolate, um, you have dark chocolate with sea salt. I really like this one. Um, again, you have the cocoa balls, which you can also use these to make cocoa tea. You just drop them down in like the hot boiling water. Um, your milk chocolate, your different white varieties, like the ginger, the oil down and everything like that. Um, and then you have more milk chocolate here. I wonder what's the difference. I think they're just different packaging. Oh, pure Grenada. So this one has like, the cinnamon and nutmeg and everything in it and so yeah um there's all different stuff you can buy in here there's just more so yeah definitely definitely recommend buying some things here also they have a few other things like some of the spices that you can buy here grown here um cinnamon turmeric ginger all of that jazz but yep okay so now we're headed just to see some of the rest of the property in the estate um like Kelly was telling me, there's a goat dairy here. They make goat cheese. Do you do goat milk? Goat milk. Goat milk. Um, see, just for the cheese. Just for the cheese. Okay. But just, yeah. Um, and some more things. So we're just about to walk on around and everything. So we're at the goat dairy room where they like process the cheese and everything. And we're not really allowed to go in there, but they are going to get me have a sample. So I'm just waiting on them to grab a piece. And then I'm going to show y'all me trying it. So yeah. This is goat cheese with cracked pepper. Well, cracked pepper? Crack what pepper. is cracked pepper? <laughs> Crack pepper. It tastes good. Tastes good? Mm-hmm. Alright. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the crack pepper. I was really hesitant. Because some goat cheese is not good. That was actually really, really good. And there's only one other person's goat cheese who I really like. And she lives in Atlanta. It does taste really good. It's a local dairy in Atlanta. This one's really good. What other what other kinds do you say they so are? So we do uh, garlic and chive, um, the Italian blend. Um, there's a 60% dark chocolate with goat cheese as well. It's called a chocolate delight. Right? What do people use that in? I'm really curious. Like, Whatever you, if you want to do like your salads and stuff, you can put that salad? in your greens. Really? Yeah. With chocolate? Because <laughs> like, you, know, you know what? A lot of French people. Really? Yes. Really? I've never heard of that. <laughs> and I, that one, I don't know how to try. But it's cool. It's, it's, it's different. So. Because I said to them, I'm not sure what that would be like. And they were like, it is amazing. And I'm like, okay. Then. Okay, I'll yeah. I'll have to give it a try, but not yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was good, so. Yeah, so she's saying the cracked pepper is similar to that of like a black pepper or something. Yeah, it was good, yeah. yeah so it's like that then. Okay. Right? Yep. So goat cheese. Thumbs up for goat cheese. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> No thanks, I just want you to come in front. No crackers, I'm good. 
Come over. Come say oh, hi. I see you right there. No crackers. Just come and say hi. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm okay. Ha, ha. <laughs> Boy. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Happy birthday. Ha, ha, ha. Come over. Come. Would you like a cracker or not? Rainbow? Do you want a cracker? Do you want a cracker? Ha, ha. Boy. <laughs> so she copied the laugh from the ladies. Yeah. She asked for the crackers. You also, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Aww. <laughs> cats here at night so she copied that song as well yeah this is amazon yellow head and they can live for over 50 years how old is she do you know she's over 15. oh wow yeah, over 15 right ho, ho, ho. Meow. happy birthday to you happy happy birthday ho, ho. okay bye bye you sure not <laughs> she wants me to groom her come okay oh okay. Fertilizer. Oh wow. After okay. roasting. You smell that? Wow. So if you have a floral garden, hmm. that's what you want in your floral garden. Because it'll make it smell like chocolate. And also it's gonna help your plants grow very well. Yeah. Right? That's cool. When it smells, you can't go wrong with that. Smell. Yeah. So this is a restaurant. Um, it's only open, you said, on Sundays now? Yes. Yeah. It used to be open every day, like, pre-pandemic, but it hasn't opened back up during the week. And so it's really nice. It's like a nice breeze in here. A lot of times they have live music. Live band always on Sundays, and it's always a buffet as well, yeah? Yeah, I really like the buffet aspect, and it comes with an appetizer, you get a soup, you get your drink, exactly. you get a dessert, and then you get the buffet that's just as much as you want and there's like set things every time so and then you just sit over here and you just overlook the cocoa and everything like that so yeah okay so i have a lunch prepared apparently for me so i just wait for you all <laughs> So I was made a rice peel off of raisins and I think almonds, green beans, fish, sweet potatoes, plantains, and a green salad. A lot of Grenadian dishes have the green salad with the tomatoes and cucumbers and plus or minus onions. Um, if you're watching this and you're from America, yeah, the sweet potatoes and Grenada, a lot of times when you cut into them, they're white. I know ours back home are like orangish and kind of soft and mushy, but they are just a potato. They taste good. Everything I've ever had at Belmont Estate is amazing. Like even like in the normal full course with the soups, like I've had multiple of their soups even their desserts and I'm not a huge desserts or sweet person um, like this tamarind sauce it was like so good I was like what is this it was like great um, even if you're not like a chocolate person and you're not into it for the chocolate like go to Belmont just to like eat at the restaurant like their food is so good I've never had anything bad like and I've had different things on different days um, this particular day I was like a little sad missing Maggie because I was eating alone but you know the people that were inside of the cafe were really nice that worked there and they talked to me and kept me company but like I said, 10 out of 10, Belmont is one of my favorite restaurants on the island. Okay, so I'm officially done. I'm about to leave. Um, I have a huge bag of chocolate for people back home that asked for it, me to bring them some. And then I also got a smaller bag as a gift. Um, I'm really happy to have come back up here. Like I said, like I always enjoy my time up here. Um, be sure to come up here if you have the time. And until next time, I can't do my normal pee, so I'm gonna just smile. <laughs> I also meant to show that I got real true organic cocoa butter while I was there. Um, so if you remember in the beginning of the video when I was making the chocolate and it was before we started adding the sugar in the milk, that was pure cocoa butter that's extracted from the chocolate. And they do keep that and they like sell it as cocoa butter. So you can literally just rub it on your skin. And it smells so good, it smells like chocolate. And I actually have another video where there was somebody walking around with it and I was just like using it in the liquid form. Like it smells so good, like I just wanna eat it because it smells like white chocolate. But did you know that is what white chocolate is? It's just cocoa butter 
and sugar and milk. So all those times when you say you like white chocolate, you're really not eating chocolate. You're eating the oil that has been extracted. Fun fact. But okay, bye.